guys. So today we're going to take our takedown AR. This is our 12 and a half inch breakdown and uh, we're going to do some scheduled maintenance. Uh, this run, this gun's had about three, about 300 rounds fired through it since its last cleaning. So you guys are going to get to see uh, how I do it personally. So let's go ahead and get it kicked off. First thing we want to do, unload our weapon. Okay. Weapons unloaded. And next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and separate our upper from our lower. And all you're gonna do is hit your two takedown pins, lean the front up, rock it out, and there you go. Uh, you can do it another way. If you wanna do it this way, this is totally on you. Uh, but if you want to, you can fold your law tack around. And when you get to here, you're gonna push the button that locks and unlocks the, the law tack, pull your bolt all the way out to there. And then the plug stuck in the end of it just kind of give it a little twist and a little pull and she'll come right out set that aside put your bolt all the way back in battery and now you can open up if you pull that plug out and you still can't move you can't get your upper to open it's because your bolt isn't all the way forward let's see right there there's where it is and so from here we'll go ahead and we have our upper separated from our lower so some of the things you're going to need just for this little uh, task, just some gloves if, in case you don't want to get your hands all oily and nasty, uh, a little fine tip screwdriver, flathead, something just to scratch with, a uh, wire brush, some carbon destroyer, some American resistance gun oil once we're all done, um, and your chamber brush. Uh, what we do, we put that chamber brush on our cleaning rod and put it into our cordless drill. And that's how we get our chamber clean. So we'll start off first with our upper. Let's go ahead and glove up because this is about to get nasty. Take our barrel off. The breakdowns have the unique ability for ease of cleaning to get to your chamber super easily. So what we're going to do first, we're just going to go ahead and put our cordless in there. Put it on high speed and let her fly. Alright, so I forgot to include in your list the stuff you're going to need is Q-tips. So once we get down to this point, we've run our chamber brush through there. We can just take our Q-tip and just kind of fine polish it. Get all the, all the excess buildup off. Um, you can use a paper towel if you want, you know, to wipe off the outside and all that. It's really on you. There's no rocket science to cleaning your weapon. Just get the bulk of it out. Shine up real good. Let me show you. All right. So uh, I don't um, run a bore snake through mine. Uh, not until I get to about you know two to three thousand rounds through a barrel before I'll do it because. Uh, I like a dirty, I like my rifling dirty, it kind of, you know, if you do run a boar snake, you're going to see your groups widen up. Uh, it'll take, you know, anywhere from five to 15, 20 rounds, something like that. And you'll start seeing your rifling, or you'll start seeing your grouping tighten up because your rifling got dirty back. So, all right, had to go get some paper towels, but uh, what you can do is you can take them, just kind of wipe off all the excess gunk and build up. And we're going to go back and re-lube all this anyway, so don't worry about taking the lube off. Uh, and while you're doing this, just kind of check, make sure you don't have anything bent or anything up in here. Um, I haven't seen anything break on these yet. You know, we think I've moved over 500 units of these and not one warranty issue. So, uh, should be good there. Next up is your upper receiver. Uh, you're going to get down inside of here and it, again, makes it super easy because, you know, your barrel's off, everything's off, you can kind of handle it. But uh, just kind of wipe off the excess and then we're going to take our chamber brush and spot shine what we can. Okay. Take a chamber brush, come down inside. Take a dirty one and just kind of run her through the middle. 
Anything that our brush broke up, we should grab with this. And then we'll take a Q-tip and we'll fine polish out a little nicks and crannies we couldn't get to with our brush. And okay. we'll take this again, kind of get a good clean scrubbing. And let's go ahead and move on to our charging handle. Just give this guy a good wipe down, both the top side and the belly up underneath here. And you can run Q-tips, paper towels, again, whatever you want to do just to kind of get the build up off. All right, now, now let's go ahead and move into our bulk carrier. We're going to wipe off all of our outside buildup, get some of that old lube off, all the heavy carbon buildup. And let's go ahead and jump into the disassembly of this. All right, so if you don't know how to take a bulk carrier apart, super easy, not a whole lot of uh, difficulty to it. You got your cotter pin over here on this side, a little keeper pin. You may be able to get it with your fingernail. If you can't, use your little flathead and just kind of get in there and just pry up on it. Now on rifle caliber, once you pull that out, the, the firing pin is not spring loaded. It is. When you pull this out on a pistol caliber, your firing pin has a spring and it's spring loaded. So as you pull that cotter pin out on a pistol caliber, that spring is going to shoot back and there's going to be a little uh, spring on it. So just make sure on pistol caliber, there should be a spring right here. So if you don't look on the floor, look somewhere, it's somewhere around. But for rifle caliber, you'll get your firing pin out. Let's go ahead and give it a good wipe down, get the bulk of it off. Set that aside. And now once you're here, you took your, your uh, keeper pin out, your firing pins out. Now your cam pin, you're going to see right here, you can spin this now. And what we're going to do is we're going to spin it to where it's perpen or it's uh, running parallel with the carrier. And then we can just, oop, then we can kind of peel it out. If it won't peel out, you can knock it upside down and you get your, your cam pin. Let's go ahead, give it a good wipe down. Get, oop. Uh, wipe it all down. Just getting the bulk of it off for now. All right, so once you pull your cam pan out, now your bolt is going to come out of your carrier. And this is where the bulk of your carbon buildup is going to be, is inside of there and in your, in, or on your bolt. And so what we're going to do first, again, just like everything, just get the bulk of it off. Now, this is where the wire brush comes in right here on this little edge you can see all the way around here this is where the bulk of it builds up on that little rounded face is your is your biggest area now what i'm going to show you is uh arguable on if it should be done or not i like to take my little tiny flathead and scrape the carbon off of this now don't get too aggressive with it you don't want to take off whatever coating you have uh, but you can definitely use this to get the big chunks of carbon off of, let me see if I can, uh, right along this little face right here. We're just kind of getting the bulk of that carbon off. And so you can just use it, kind of run it around real lightly. It'll take it up without a whole lot of effort. I'm going to scratch all that. And then, so another question or controversial statement, make sure that your gas rings aren't all lined up. You'll notice that there's little, there's, there's three gas rings in here and they each have a little break at one end where they clamp around. You want to spin those all to different spots. If they're all lined up, this is where the controversy starts. Personally, I have seen a weapon malfunction and give uh, fail to cycles when all three are lined up. 
and then we even took one intentionally lined them all up and went and fired it fired just fine so it's kind of arguable on that i don't really know if there's any truth to it i just know that in the military they always told us to make sure our gas rings were never aligned um, and i've seen both ways i've seen a gun run with them all aligned and without so uh i don't i don't really have an educated answer on that for you on why that works so uh now on your bolt carrier we're going to use our same bore brush and dewalt and we're going to come right inside shove it all the way down and turn it on and go so that should be about all you need to do we can take a paper towel you can get a little wad stick it in there keep a little pigtail out on the back end and just Twist it with the paper towel in there, and that should get the bulk of what you're looking for. All right, so now you can go through with your carbon destroyer. Um, I like to take, kind of put out a little pad because this stuff will make a mess on your workstation. So you can just use all your dirties and uh, kind of pile this on top. And we're going to get down inside of there, and then we're going to take our little wire brush and just kind of give it all a good scrub. And guys, you can get these little wire brushes at Harbor Freight or Walmart or anywhere for, you know, a couple bucks for a whole pack of them. So easy to find and very handy across the board on all kinds of different things. Uh, Just kind of let that sit there and soak for a minute. We'll put some on the firing pin, uh, on your cam pin. And then just take your wire brush and kind of spot check them a little bit. And guys, this, uh, when you're using uh, degreasers or carbon, you know, solvents, you got to make sure once we're done with this, you got to lube it up because this stuff's going to do the exact opposite. It's going to dry it out. It's going to make it super dry once we wipe all this off. So you definitely want to lube your weapon after this one. Okay. All right. Last paper towel. We're going to use our clean one to wipe all this down. Make sure you get as much of this uh, degreaser off as you can, just, you know, helps out when you go to put your lube on, it doesn't kind of counteract it or anything. There we go. Getting all these little nooks and crannies, as much of it off as you can, guys, because clean, wet weapon is a very productive weapon. All right, go ahead and polish these up, get some more carrier. And still got a little bit on here. Now let's rebuild our bolt carrier back to function. So what we're going to do first, we're going to take our lube and we have, you know, our American resistance lube on the back of it. I put my quote, stop telling your wife to put oil in your car. If you're not oiling your weapon, guys, this bolt carrier inside of this upper receiver is no different than a piston in an engine block. You run it dry. It will seize up that engine. You run this dry. It will seize up this weapon. So lube your weapons guys. And so for lubing the bolt, this is, you want a lot of lube on this. We're going to just pretty much cake it on here. The more lube, the better guys. All right. 
And when you put your bolt in, you just go ahead and spin it, get all that lube good and mixed around. And when you're spinning this up, so our carrier's facing this way, and you're going to notice on your bolt, it's perfect. It's the same all the way around except for one side. That's your extractor right there. And what you're going to do, that extractor should be pointed on the upper right hand side. So our extractor, this is the right side of the bolt and the extractor is on the right side. This, it's kind of a quick way to look at it, but let me show you. Oh, getting all luby. So you'll notice that the cam pin goes down in that hole on the carrier. It's only going to go in on one side. So it won't let you install it the wrong way. So whenever you put it in, if you're trying to put your, your bolt in or your cam pin in and it won't go, just take your bolt and rotate it toward the hole to where you see the other side of the hole and that'll allow you to go in. Now, once that's in, take that cam pin and turn it perpendicular to the carrier and take your finger and hold that bolt right there. And then what we're going to do is take our firing pin, come in the belly side at an angle, and then just kind of push it through. And it should push all the way. We're going to hold it uh, with our thumb against the back of the firing pin, our index finger against the bolt. We're going to take our cam pin, and we're going to just push it on through. And now to do a function check, make sure everything's good, just grab the back of the bolt and whip if with the bolt pushed in. If the bolt comes out and like that, then you have a correctly done bolt. And guys, if you're wondering these little brushes, this is the one. Uh, this is the one I like to use. They usually cost like two bucks or something. Uh, but this is the Hops 9, uh, number 1323P. Uh, but this is what we use for pretty much everything. All right, so getting into our lower. Uh, first thing I like to do is go ahead and remove the buffer and the spring by pushing that detent down. Pull our, our buffer and our spring out. Okay. What we're going to do first is get all the excess right here that you can get to and then take our buffer and spring and go ahead and wipe those down get all the excess off. You're going to have a lot of build up on this too. Um, so there you go. Wipe down all the build up inside and then you're going to have in your trigger group what you're going to do move your safety selector to fire capture your hammer so that you don't let it just fly up and hit right here because it'll crack this bolt catch. We're going to capture it, pull the trigger, and ease the hammer forward. And now we can get down inside and get the bulk of what we need to do. Now this task, particularly with the trigger, is best done with a Q-tip because of the confined space you're dealing with inside of the trigger well. So uh, it takes a little while longer, but this Q-tip will get down inside of there and get the bulk of it out for you. And so just get all around everywhere right here. Um, Check your bolt catch, make sure it doesn't have a whole lot of buildup. If you get a lot of buildup inside of there, this will actually stop working and the spring and uh, plunger will kind of lock up. I've seen it happen a few times, so it uh, doesn't hurt to just spray a little bit of lube down in there. If you have shop air, you can even take shop air and blow it inside of here and get any, any buildup out of there. So, all right. Here, take a magwell, get it all wiped out. You will have buildup in there as well. Now, going back together, I like to put a little bit of lube on my hammer and trigger, uh, ma uh, mainly on the sear. So this one's a two-stage. It's going to have a couple extra little sear faces, but uh, just put a little lube down in there. You ain't going to put a whole lot, but this is a working component, moving parts, so good to have a little lube. Now, if you've ever picked up somebody's AR, and when you pull the action back, it sounded like glass and it felt super smooth, uh, most of what you feel in that... Uh, is in your buffer and spring. And so what you can do is take a few drops of lube and put them right inside of your buffer tube. You know, probably one teardrop on all four corners. And you got a little lube in there. Now we can take our buffer and spring, put them back in there. And that should give you a nice quiet action, nice smooth action. And now we are ready to put this back together. So what we're gonna do, take our upper receiver and let's see a little spot in there. Okay, 
So we've already lubed our bolt carrier and now we need to lube our charging handle. So just run a little line of lube right down the top and right on the inside. You may put a little bit on the sides if you want. Like I said, more lube is better than, than none. Take our bolt or our charging handle, put it on in there, slide it halfway in. Make sure your bolt is pulled all the way out and it sets in just like that. And they both go in together. And so now your upper is back together. We can go ahead and click it back on our lower. And from here, we can fold our law tack, take our plug, put it back in. Now, what you never want to do, pistol caliber, rifle caliber, doesn't matter, is when your barrel is not on here, do not pull this charger handle back and let it go freely. You can pull it back and ease it forward like that, but what's going to happen is when that barrel's not on, it, there's nothing pushing this bolt back about an eighth or about a sixteenth of an inch, and it'll allow everything to over travel forward when there's no barrel, and so your buffer will impact your buffer detent, and your bolt carrier gas key will impact your charger handle, and those two parts will break. So. In short, don't pull this back and let it go freely without the barrel on. So from there, now we're good. Let's put a little bit of lube right around the barrel extension. And let's reinstall it. And now we're ready for a function check. Weapons on safe. And we'll just work our action, get that lube moving around, turn around. And then we can work our trigger. And there you go guys that's how i personally service my weapon after about two to three hundred rounds i'll do the same thing if you're running suppressed you may want to do it about every hundred rounds because you're going to be taking all that carbon and dumping everything back in here um, but that's it guys if you have any questions y'all know the deal send me an email american resistance gear at yahoo.com or give me a call at the shop 936-569-9400 thank you guys <laughs>